All right, ready to get started? Well, it's almost the end of day two. You all are surviving Global Partner Summit. I think there's one or two more sessions left, I think, for everybody. Um, my name is Ryan Cothran, and uh, along with my colleague Mira Ayad, we are going to take some time to kind of summarize and present all of the global APN program announcements, uh, whether they're announcements or even some of the launches that are taking place or uh, for programs or program elements that are going to be made immediately available as of today or later in this week. And so we'll take some time to go through that part. So if we take a look at the agenda, uh, what we're going to do is just spend a quick minute on, the, on this concept of differentiation. If, uh, if you haven't heard us talk about that before, uh, again, I'll spend a few minutes talking about that before we go ahead and head into our APN program announcement. So we're going to start with um, the service delivery program, uh, focus more on roadmap than actual service announcements uh, relating to that program today. And then we'll talk about the uh, competency program. Uh, the brand new AWS Solution Provider Program, which Mira is going to come on stage and talk about here. Uh, and then I'll, I'll kind of come back on to close out and spend a few minutes on a brand new uh, tool that we're launching today called APN uh, Badge Manager. So we'll spend some time on that in addition to some messaging and how to use our badges and how, or at least how we think you should use our badges. And then you guys get to take over from there. So as I mentioned before, uh, I do want to spend a, a few minutes on this concept of differentiation. So if you've participated in any of our regional summits around the world, we've actually had the opportunity to introduce this concept throughout 2017. And what we want to do for 2018 and beyond is actually take a little bit of a different spin on that same, mess on that same differentiation message. And that spin incorporates a little bit more of a customer-centric approach to differentiation. So when we talk about differentiation, this is kind of what we mean by that. And that is the ability to demonstrate validated excellence, experience, and expertise in the solutions that you provide to AWS customers. Now we back that up with actual validation programs. So this is where we highlight service delivery. This is where we highlight uh, MSP program as an example, and also where we highlight the, the competency program as a really good opportunity to uh, differentiate yourself and your business and your solutions to AWS customers. So again, taking a look at that list of the programs that typically fit into this concept of differentiation, we have the AWS Managed Service Provider Program, the AWS Service Delivery Program, and the AWS Competency Program. And if you, were, if you had the opportunity to make it into the keynote today, uh, Terry Wise announced the brand new AWS SaaS Accelerate Program. So for this session, we are not going to spend too much time on SaaS Accelerate because uh, Emily Tyak actually had uh, a session leading on that to earlier today at about 2.15. And I just wanted to highlight that it is Business 2.15. That is the ID for that session. I do highly recommend you go back if you, if you did not participate in that SaaS Accelerate session and go back and watch the recording that will be on the YouTube channel. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to highlight about that too is that the SaaS Accelerate program is ideal for our technology partners that are advanced here or above, um, or any of our partners that might be advanced here or above as well, because there's a consulting message with this too. Uh, and it connects those validated solutions that you have with some additional programs we're making available to you to help accelerate your business and accelerate your growth. Uh, the other point about the consulting side for SaaS Accelerate is a lot of our consulting partners provide development solutions to technology partners. So it's extremely important for our consulting partners who provide these types of services to be up to speed on what we think is great for SaaS. So again, a play for consulting in addition to our technology partners to go back and take a look at when you have the opportunity. What are our customers are looking for? So this is the one big, huge reason why I want to hit on the importance of differentiation is because AWS customers are now requesting this as part of their RFPs, their RFIs. They're recognizing the value of differentiation programs and they're building it into the assets that they've got. So here's one example that we have for you. Uh, this is a, a highly esteemed EDU institution whose name, of course, we've had to block out. Uh, but they requested that in order to respond, you have to be a premier IP and tier partner that you have to be an authorized MSP partner. So here's the managed service provider program. And that you have to have migration and big data competency in order to respond to the bid. 
So this is a prime example of what our partners who are in the know about AWS programs are beginning to ask for. So good. Another um, important reason, as I mentioned, to make sure that you are at least considering a differentiation program if you are new to the concept today. So uh, no big announcements for the MSP program, but I did just want to highlight uh, another session that we had actually yesterday. It was a very popular session. They had two different sessions. That is uh, business session 204. It was led by my colleague Barbara Kessler, who is the, the uh, business development lead for the MSP program. Again, highly recommend you go back and take a look at that. One of the key important things that she introduced in that session is our uh, TEI study. So that is the Forrester um, Total Economic Impact Study. A lot of good information to help you understand what our successful MSPs are doing today and potentially give you some, some information um, to help drive that as a decision for your own business. So highly recommend you go back and take a look at that. But one thing I did want to highlight before I move into the uh, announcement section is what the MSP program means to us. So if you haven't heard this term of a next-gen MSP, what we mean by that are, um, or what we built, I should say, is a program that helps to recognize partners and embrace the full life cycle of AWS services for their customers. So these are consulting partners that uh, get started at the beginning of the planning process. They insert themselves as consultants and AWS experts. They um, help to develop the plan, uh, that whether it's a migration plan, an implementation plan for their customers, and design this as a, as a well-architected solution for their customers. They um, also get their ProServe their pro hands dirty by rolling up their sleeves and actually doing the building and the migration services. And in a traditional sense of an MSP, these partners not only just continue to run these solutions, but they are constantly looking for ways to optimize the environments for their customers. And again, that's what our perspective is of a next-gen MSP partner, and that is what the MSP program is built around. Sorry if I just shot anybody with a laser here. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so we'll start today with the uh, AWS Service Delivery Program. So again, we're not launching any new services as part of that program. But what I do want to do is uh, spend a just a quick second to level set on what the um, service delivery program is. Show of hands, how many of you in here have heard of the program? Okay, so this is a good opportunity <laughs> to talk about it. So what the service delivery program is, is it's really a way for us to recognize a partner's expertise at the solution level. And in just another minute, I'll go ahead and walk through how we categorize the AWS um, service delivery designations today, how we break that out for the available services. But some of the benefits that you have and why you want to participate in this particular program is to potentially connect with our AWS service teams. One of the top asks that we get is how, as a partner, you could participate in providing feedback on AWS services, participate in betas, have access to our service teams, and this is an ideal program that's tailored to provide that level of access because we are vetting you, we are validating you for your expertise, and our service, our service teams are part of that process, and they, uh, they recognize that value, and they're willing to go ahead and talk with those partners. Visibility to AWS customers and AWS sellers, because if you are a service delivery partner, we do take the opportunity to pop your logo on some of the AWS service pages, and you also receive that recognition in Partner Solution Finder. So if you have customers and our sellers are using Partner Solution Finder as well, your designation as a service delivery partner for your solutions will show up there as well. And finally, uh, the opportunity to, to uh, participate in service-specific beta programs. So again, a very real value add. Our service teams are taking this program very seriously and allowing our partners to come a little bit closer to the services themselves. So let's take a look at how our service delivery elements are broken down. So these are the services that we currently um, offer designations for. So starting with compute, database, and content delivery, analytic services, security, serverless computing, very, very popular area for us now. And then finally, our management tools, service catalog, uh, cloud formation, cloud trail, those types of things. 
So in terms of what we wanted to cover for um, an announcement, it's really, as I mentioned, a focus on what our roadmap is going to be. This is one of the programs where we took a lot of time throughout the second half of this last year to gather feedback on how to improve the program. So this is what we're gonna be focusing on, is to uh, launch a, a stronger validation checklist process. So if any of you are familiar with the competency program or the MSP program, we want to align this with that process to provide a more consistent experience to you. Again, a really, really good piece of feedback we got from our partners. Improve the application approval process. This is straight up user experience. So we want to make sure that we are enabling the best, getting, uh, providing the ability to capture the information we need a lot easier, a lot more easily, and make that experience a little bit more consistent for you. Uh, launch updated benefits. So one of, the, uh, one of the items we're taking a look at across the board is how we can enhance the benefits that we are providing our partners, and this program is a part of that conversation for us internally. Uh, launching training and enablement content, and that's everything from after you've become a service delivery partner to some of the things we can do to enhance this experience for you ramping up into this program and getting you ready for it. And then, of course, we are evaluating new services and new areas we want to use to help drive this program forward in 2018 and beyond. Now we'll move forward to the AWS competency program. So how many of you in the room are, have a solution that's been validated for an AWS competency? Another good opportunity. So competencies, if you've gone through this process, it's not easy. We do have a very strong technical bar for the competency program. But the one stat that I wanted to leave you with here today with regard to the competency program is the fact that uh, our competency partners have experienced 100% year-over-year revenue growth versus those partners that do not hold a competency today. So just the basic statistic, but it is starting to show, especially as you saw that example of what customers are looking for, they're asking for it. So it's important and we're looking and considering how we can continue to expand that program to uh, encompass all the new solution types, partner types, and practice types that you all are building and developing on top of AWS. So aside from that wonderful stat on revenue, why else would you wanna become a competency partner? So this does differentiate, there's that word again, our top validated, um, validated solutions that our partners have today. It is a solution level validation, and again, you'll see how we break that, the competency elements down before if this is the first time you're actually seeing a little bit of information about the program. Showcases your customer and technical success. So as I mentioned, it's a strong technical bar. We look at the solutions that you have, uh, whether you're a consulting partner or whether you're a technology partner, we do put you through a, a really nice validation checklist and a process to uh, achieve that competency. Uh, partners prefer, or re, um, excuse me, receive preferred access to competency events and AWS sponsorships. So specifically, uh, opportunity I've had to participate throughout this year are roundtables that are dedicated to competency partners. Your competency holder, specific region, if you're a public sector partner, for example, had the opportunity to sit in on the public sector uh, competency partner roundtable at the summit they had uh, this summer in Washington, D.C. was a great experience. We got some valuable feedback from our partners and we use that feedback to help drive the direction of our programs moving forward. Again, another example of that here. Um, selective eligibility to customer opportunities. I'll revert back to that uh, EDU institution RFI. Uh, it allows you in the door for a lot of our, a lot of our customers and we do uh, think that that is actually going to grow as we begin to educate not only our partners on the program, but we're gonna be putting a lot of effort into educating AWS customers about the program as well and the value it can drive for them. Co-marketing awareness campaign activities. This does have a little bit to do with funding. There's a lot more opportunities that we have available for our competency partners as well. And access to under NDA briefings and roadmap discussions on services and uh, tools that relate or uh, interact with some of the competencies that we have. The other thing that I wanna um, uh, kind of move forward as well, and we talk about visibility to AWS customers and sellers, the competency program plays a big role in that as well. So again, we look at Partner Solution Finder, the primary tool that we make available to our customers to help identify partners that can solve their challenges. And hosting or uh, achieving competencies in addition to your tier and the service delivery program, all of that helps in your waiting when you come back and search results. So again, that, that tool is really based on how wide your relationship is with AWS, and the competency program plays a very strategic role in that for you. 
So let's take a look at how we break down our competencies. So this is much more of a service workload and industry level validation versus a service level validation that the service delivery program uh, uh, will validate you for. So we've got our industry sections, uh, education, financial services, government, as I mentioned before, um, from the, uh, the summit this summer. We look at some of our solution level validations from big data, migration, security, storage, some of the traditional players that we've had, big data being one of the uh, original competencies that we launched about four years ago already. And finally, our workload, Oracle Microsoft workloads and SAP. Some very, very popular um, competency applications coming in for the workload area. And we'll move into some announcements. So again, if you had the opportunity to sit in on uh, Terry's announcements at the keynote today, these are actually, I should say, these are launches and not announcements. So we have uh, officially available today, AWS networking competency for technology partners and the AWS uh, machine learning competency also for technology partners. So a lot of offering for our technology partners today. So if we start with the networking competency, so this is designed to highlight partners that provide specialized networking solutions. So two of the things that really come to mind here have to do uh, as an example with Direct Connect. So if you are a Direct Connect infrastructure player, if you're providing fiber to customers, or if you're a Direct Connect solution player, which means you're working with some of those telcos that provide the fiber, provide the infrastructure, and you're providing some sort of a third party uh, software solution, packet management, anything like that, those types of solutions will be ideal for the networking competency or to be validated for the networking competency. So we'll take a look at the first, at the full list of that. So if you do provide solutions along the lines of network connectivity, direct connect, as I mentioned before, uh, from an integration or an infrastructure perspective, load balancing, and of course, networking management. So the ideal solution types for this uh, great new competency. And we take a look at machine learning competency, again, for technology partners. So if you provide solutions in the emerging space of artificial intelligence, this is an ideal place for you to look in terms of the types of solutions that you're going to provide. SaaS-based capabilities also make, plays a big role here in terms of uh, the partners that we've been looking at so far under the beta to get the announcement out. So if we take a quick look at the types of solutions that are ideal for validation for the machine learning competency, data services, platform solutions, and of course, SaaS solutions, as we mentioned before. If you hadn't caught on to that yet, yet, SaaS is a big thing for us. We like SaaS, and we're gonna validate that in a couple different ways, starting with the uh, machine learning competency. So next up for us, let's talk, talk about, so we, these are the, the launches, but we also have five competencies that we're pre-announcing, which is really exciting space for us here. AWS container competency, end user computing competency, blockchain competency, machine learning for consulting partners, and of course, uh, cloud management tools competency. So what we'll see is a lot of information. These are obviously things we don't, uh, we're not going to make available right now, but there is a lot of information that will become available uh, for this. If these areas are very interesting to you, you, have, you feel like you have some solutions that might fit into the space, I would absolutely raise your hand to have a conversation with your PDM or your PDR and see if there's an opportunity to get in as a launch partner. We do have an open application process where we can have some partners participate in that, so it's a really good opportunity. Uh, regarding the, the two uh, competencies that we launched, if those are of interest to you, step number one, we always recommend that you download the validation checklist from our website. It is live, it is available for networking and machine learning competencies. Take a look at that, make sure that that is your first overview of what's going to be required in order to meet the minimum bar as an advanced tier or above partner to apply for those competencies. The next step beyond that would be if you have a good, great relationship with your PDM, work with your PDM, but ultimately you will need to submit an application via Partner Central. And that's where you select the service and get the application process started for either the networking or the machine learning competency. And with that, I'm gonna take a break and hand things over to Mira. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Thank you. In my culture, I say hi, people reply back. So I was expecting a reply back. 
Um, my name is Mira Ayad. I own the channel development, uh, channel programs development, focusing on the channel reseller program. And um, I feel that by now you've kind of read the bio, you know Ryan, you know me. I want to get to know you a little bit better. So just by a show of hands, how many here are customers? All right. Thank you for your business. APM partners? Technology partners, keep your hands up. Consulting partners, resellers, great. So if you're not a consulting and a reseller, uh, this might be a boring part of the session for you. I promise you I'll be very quick. If you blink, you will miss me. So do not, uh, do not hold the breath. Uh, today, I want to talk about a little bit about a day in the life of a consulting partner. And for the customers and for the technology partners, it's very good to understand how your partner in crime is actually uh, approaching customers, how they are getting into new business, and that will evolve into having a partner-to-partner -partner, uh, relationship when you approach your customers. So we wanted to understand more about the partner's experience. I need to understand how they are conducting business. So we did a lot of surveys, studies, we talked to customers, we talked to partners, and we asked them, you've been very successful with AWS, what are the main offer areas that has actually helped you be successful with AWS? And all the studies and all our conversation came back with three main focus areas, consulting services, and if you remember Ryan's presentation about the MSP program, it is the beginning of the relationship with the customers. We look at consulting services as the way to introduce yourself, introduce your capability, be that differentiation offer, be that stand up in the crowd, and start this relationship with your customer. This is the golden opportunity for you to go and tell your customer, this is how I'm going to architect your cloud journey, and this is how you are going to do it. And immediately you are a trusted advisor there. We ask partners, what's next? What happens after you do the consulting? And without any hesitation, migration came back as the second natural step in this relationship. Partners came and say, well, migration is sometimes a heavy investment. We have to do a lot of work to get migration, but we're more than happy to do it because it is a foot in the door to gain a new customer. And customers are coming and saying, we are now more than ever ready to move bigger workloads into the cloud faster. So for us in AWS, we're like, we want to enable our partners to drive more migration and help them with that. If you're not a competency holder, if you're not a migration competency holder, I really encourage you to go and look at that as a differentiation in your migration offer. The third offer area was managed services. And if you look at it, this is the ultimate goal of the life cycle or the day of the life of a consulting partner. AWS and the partners want to reach this managed um, service providing relationship with the customer because you are now in a long-term relationship with this customer. You get to provide the guidance that's needed, help them optimize, manage their cloud end-to-end -end so they can go ahead and focus on their core competency. The beauty about managed services, it's the gift that keeps giving. So once the partner reach into a managed relationship with their end customers, it's an opportunity to restart consulting services again and move more workloads into the cloud. Those studies and those chats that we've had with our customers and our partners around the world kind of helped us shape our vision for one of our leading programs of APN, which is the Channel Reseller Program. It is the only program for APN that allow consulting partners to go ahead and sell, service, bill, support uh, AWS cloud services to uh, their customers. The new uh, program, um, it's called the AWS Solution Provider. It was announced today in the keynote. Uh, today we are just unveiling the program, we're not launching the program, and we're going to talk about the timelines. 
But these are the three main changes in the program. And I won't call them changes. I will just call them natural evolution of the program. We're looking at partners who have pro proven track record of success in achieving, attaining, and maintaining technical certification, accreditation, competency, being MSP audited. And we are giving back to them for achieving and investing in AWS technologies. We're also having additional incentives for partners who are going to approach new customers and bringing this new business to AWS. We listen to our customers and we're offering flexible contracts with AWS. We're also unlocking for a subset of partners uh, flexible support options. All those changes are coming to you um, with the launch of uh, AWS Solution Provider Program. It's not gonna take any effect now. Uh, so if you are a channel reseller partner or if you are a consulting partner that looking into becoming a channel reseller partner, I highly encourage you to go ahead and look at your portfolio, see if there's any competencies that you can attain uh, to, be, to, to be able to unlock all the benefits of the new program. As I mentioned, we just announced today in the keynote, we'll be rolling out the program throughout 2018. We will be collecting feedback and we will be actually collecting interest from partners who wants to move to the solution provider program. So please go ahead and visit uh, our amazon.com forward slash partners forward slash standard reseller and click on the sign up to learn more. We will be collecting your interest applications and we'll be communicating early in 2018 uh, how we're going to roll out and if you are a channel reseller partner, what's your journey there uh, to get to the solution provider program and if you are a consulting partner, what are the criteria to become a solution provider program? If you have questions, please feel free to ask them after the session. I will be hanging out here. If you have if you want to have a lengthier conversation, please feel free to book some time with me. I don't have anywhere better to go until Friday morning. All right, thank you so much. Back to you, Ryan. Thank you. So just to close out here for the next uh, five to 10 minutes, we just want to talk about uh, APN badging and messaging. And uh, what that encompasses is a lot of our, our go-to-market channels, the resources that we've been providing to you so far have come by way of two different channels. So APN Marketing Central, which is that tool that you have accessible in Partner Central. Again, if you're a standard or above partner, that provides kind of canned messaging. It provides you uh, everything with social media to webinar in a box type of functionality that allows you to get at some AWS messaging uh, and co-branding without having to get approval, as an example, if you haven't experienced that yet. And I mentioned a couple different times, uh, APN Partner Solutions Finder, which is our primary search tool for AWS customers and for AWS sellers especially. And what we want to go ahead and announce today is our new APN Badge Manager tool. And this is really, uh, as we've talked about a couple, this is uh, a popular concept for us, uh, for both Mira and myself especially, uh, being on the global programs team and a part of that, is that we take a lot of feedback from partners. And uh, a lot of partners have provided feedback over the last uh, two years, in fact, that they would like some assistance uh, making sense of all the different logos that we provide you. When you achieve something, it's great, but you get another logo with it. And what are you supposed to do with it? And how do you use it along with the other five logos that you have from us? So we have an answer for you today. And we want to spend a little bit of time both on the tool and uh, on the messaging for it as well. So in terms of Badge Manager, um, what this tool is designed to do is to allow your alliance leads to access, manage, and create APN badges for diff different types of messaging. We'll have some examples that we'll walk through here. But you have, um, you have different needs. You've got printed collateral. You have event collateral that you might want to create. You have RFPs and RFIs that you might want to respond to. You're, you're, you're attending different industry events and you want to be able to create customized messaging. And now you can create customized AP, uh, APN and AWS validations as a part of that. Uh, it does make use of our brand new AWS logo and branding language, thankfully. And we also get to uh, display up to five different program uh, elements in a single APN badge. And we'll see a little bit of what that looks like here in just a second. Now, 
you might be asking yourself, well, what in the world is a badge, and how is that different than a logo? What does that mean, really? So we'll take a look at the taxonomy of a new APN badge for you. Uh, number one, or starting with, I should say, the APN logo. So the logo is really a building block for the rest of the badge. And this is what the APN logo is. I know a lot of you have already seen that everywhere here in addition to the, to the AWS logo, and you now have access to it. It also includes a couple of other fixed components, and that is your tier level and your partner type. So both of those will be fixed for you and available automatically inside of the tool. And then what you get to do from there is customize the rest based on the programs that you are a part of or the differentiation elements, to use that term again, that you've already achieved or have obtained. And that can be anywhere from participation in the public sector program, or public sector partner program, I should say, to a specific uh, AWS competency that you've achieved. And we'll take a look at some examples of what that looks like a little bit further. Everything from on the left-hand side, this is what we call your foundation badge. This is your default badge. It's always gonna be in there waiting for you. And then you can create some other customized um, elements as you can see, and again, we use that up to five to give you the opportunity to make sure that you're remaining focused on what your message is to an AWS customer. The badge itself has two tabs, excuse me, the tool itself has two tabs. The first one is your badge library. And this is where all of your default APN badges are going to be housed. So again, that far left badge by default will show up for every standard and above partner. There are a couple of really cool convenience features that we built into it for version one. And that has to do with the, as soon as you obtain a new element, so let's say you get approved for an AWS competency, as soon as we flip that switch in the system, Badge Manager automatically creates a new default badge for you, places it in your library tab here, so that you can go and download that immediately. You don't have to create that. The library will also store all of the custom badges that you create and hit the save button on. So you can go back and download those at a later date. The badge builder function, that second tab, as you can see here, it allows you to, it'll list all of the eligible program elements that you've been approved for already. You click those into the next box, you can reorder those, and then you get to take a look at a preview before you either download the badge or save it back to your library. And today we currently do not have a limit on the number of, of custom badges you can create, so go crazy with that and have a good time with it if you want to. Um, and with the badge manager, once, you know, we'll go back to the example of attaining a new competency or attaining a new program. We do a great job of sending a confirmation email and saying congratulations and attaching a new logo to that or making a logo available for you to download somewhere in the content tab of Partner Central, but we don't do anything further than that. We don't say, this is your best practice on where you should present this logo. This is how you should use the logo. And we wanna take a first step at that today by introducing a very simple messaging methodology as part of the release of Badge Manager and you may have also noticed that our partner marketing organization just produced a brand new partner marketing toolkit that has or includes guidelines on everything from the use of our Powered by AWS logo to other AWS logos that you may have access to as a partner. And we're going to be building out the APN badge component of that as well. It's publicly available for download today. And that methodology is very simple, as I mentioned, and looks like this. We want you to lead with your solutions instead of our logo. We want you to lead with your solutions. We want you to back that up with your value and then utilize the APN badging to support your message and your value to customers. And this is really just based on having conversations with customers and understanding what they're looking for it's also going to help us drive the direction of some of our other tools like um, um, partner solu or the Solution Finder and Marketing Central. But again, just a very, very simple approach to help out uh, based on what we hear is what our customers are looking for. In addition to that, we have this concept now of a partner level validation and a solution level validation. I'm sure you can guess what the latter one is. But when we talk about that, partner level validations, if you are in, and Mira said I had to pay her a dollar every time I said reseller after she introduced the new program. So if you're in the solution provider program, 
uh, or if you're in the MSP program, a public sector partner, those are partner level validations. And keep that in the back of your minds when you're talking about yourselves as a partner, as a full business, what partner level validations you carry. And then we have solution level validations. Simply put, your solutions are what get validated for a competency or a service delivery element. And that's what we mean by the, the solution level validation. So mixing and matching the two should be strategic. It should have a purpose and it should follow along with where you're going to use and how you're going to use an APN badge. As an example one, on your homepage, you have a lot of partnerships with a lot of technology vendors. We're really no different than that in that if you're going to display our, our, a badge on the bottom of your homepage to represent your partnership with AWS, make sure you're keeping that focused on you as a partner. So as an example here, your foundation badge, or you might want to include a couple of partner level validations to help identify yourselves and, your, and broadly what your business does across the board. Example number two would be a solutions page. So this is where we're gonna go a level deeper. We're not only gonna talk about your tier and partner type, but we want you to start messaging your solution level validations. But this is where you can also mix and match just to make it really fun. So if you've got a solution level validation as the example here, you also have um, a designation as a technology partner to talk about how that solution is delivered. This solution is available on the AWS marketplace. You're a marketplace seller and you are now communicating that to your customer using this APN badge example. And the third example I'll leave you with is an RFP response. So we do see logos used as part of that because customers do know that you can uh, get specific logos based on that. So you could potentially use this when you're identifying or validating yourself as a vendor that can deliver the services. So uh, using an APN badge is a, going to be a strong example of that moving forward. So another good example of how you can do that. Uh, and I will just leave you to, with uh, the fact that Badge Manager is available now. It launched at about two o'clock this afternoon and it's available via Partner Central. Again, today, only the Alliance Lead has access to that, but we're working on it. We'll make, we'll make an allocation model here at some point early in 2018, um, but the Alliance Lead would be, would be able to access Badge Manager. So when you do log into Partner Central, Badge Manager will be the lowest link on the left-hand side. So all of our new navigations and it's gonna be brand new waiting there for you. And as far as our session uh, is concerned today, that's all we have. So if we do, we would appreciate if you would fill out, um, fill out some feedback for this session on the mobile app. And then uh, I think Mira mentioned before, we will go ahead and uh, step down and end the session, but we have a little bit of time here in the room if you do have some questions and would like to come up and talk about it. I'll also highlight the fact that um, I will be at the AWS Village booth at the Venetian tomorrow from three o'clock to six o'clock if you wanna come, if you stop by, happen to be there and you wanna see a demonstration of Badge Manager, we'll be providing that. Thank you very much.